Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics, out on the water, mid-morning, run out tide. We've got a couple of hours of run out. Today I'm fishing jerkbait style plastics. So I'm going to be talking to you about two of my favourite jerkbait style plastics for fishing the river and estuary, how I rig those, how I fish them, and the advantages of fishing this style of plastic. So we're targeting a few flathead, and you never know, we might come across something else while we're here fishing. But let's get stuck into it, fishing jerkbaits. Fish on. All right, kicking things off with a 3.75 inch streak. So this is a great plastic, whether you're chasing bass, flatties, brim, snapper, lots of things will eat this little 3.75 inch jerkbait. It's Z-Man, so it's 10 times tough. It's super soft and feels real, so fish keep biting it. And it's, it's buoyant, naturally buoyant, so it comes to life in the water. I've got it rigged here on a quarter ounce in a 2.0 in a TT Demons and I like to fish this plastic generally on a 1.0 if it's predominantly brim and that sort of thing or a 2.0 if I'm mainly flatties with a few other bits and pieces so let's start with the 3.75 inch streaks we're fishing this edge this plastic doesn't have a lot of action so we'll talk about putting our own action into this plastic so basically I'm just going to be working the edge cool thing about this plastic it doesn't have a lot of action and that's actually an advantage at times today I've got a bit of breeze blowing so this plastic with little action means little drag so it casts a long way you can punch a big long cast in the wind it really really casts well which is great especially if you're beach fishing or you get offshore or whatever and you're looking for a plastic that you can throw a long way the other thing with it is on the same weight that you would fish on say a paddle tail or a curl tail this guy gets down there a lot quicker because it has no built-in action very little built-in action if you wind it fast you can get that tail to swim a bit but because of minimal action i've got a fair bit of outward flow here today so it allows the plastic to get down there into the strike zone quick as well when i'm chasing floodies so it casts long and it sinks quick which can be a real advantage in a stack of different situations from high wind to heavy current to deep water and also land-based fishing where you really want to get that plastic out there and get it down into the strike zone quickly. So let's roll along and see if we can pick ourselves up a flatty. Yep, there we go, fish on. Doesn't feel like a real big one, but that's within the first half dozen cast. Just a little tiny tacker to kick things off, so hopefully we find his mates. But that was just hopping that little 3.75 inch streaks off the bottom. Where there's smoke, there's fire, so we'll see if we can find a bigger one. <clears throat> that feels like it's got a little bit more weight back in where that little guy came from so as I was saying where there's smoke there's fire so often you know flat out are a schooling fish so often if you find one oh there's another one right behind him there's a bigger one chasing him here we go check this out where is his mate gone where'd your mate go buddy That was crazy, pulling this guy up and there was another guy right behind him, a bigger one. That's the guy we'll get next, hopefully. I just dropped this three eighth ounce head down with a four inch, hoping that flatty was still down there somewhere, but he would have rocketed off back into the shallows again. We'll get him next. Get off there. As always, the one that we missed was the bigger fish. So that guy, he's 
getting closer to legal, but that one that followed him up was about mid 40s. So we might just stick it out here for a little bit and throw a few more casts, see if we can get that guy. But you can see that plastic's getting down there quick. I'll talk more about retrieves in a minute, but just that real natural looking bait fish color and those flatties are getting on it. How cool is fishing? I love it when stuff like that happens. So I was on my second fish in you know eight casts or something, flicking this little guy around. A mate followed him up, so I dropped this guy down. He didn't take it, but I know he's still down there. So we're gonna see if we can get that next one. So he was more mid 40s, a little bit bigger fish. So hopefully he's still out there and we can get stuck into him. Let's keep going. I'll keep that one handy just in case I need to drop it in for that next bloke. This is just a really long bank that I'm going to prospect my way along. But I've started where the water sort of hooks around a bit of a point and that creates an eddy that's holding bait. So I like the look of it straight away. We pulled up and we got those two little guys and that bigger one following. So definitely look for, when you're fishing a big long bank, look for those areas that stand out like a, a drain or a little bit of a point or, you know, heavy weed or different structure that's along that bank that might dictate that the fish hold in a particular area. That one feels a bit better. That's got a bit more weight in it. A little bit more weight. So you know, that might have been his mate that followed him up before. So that's that 3.75 inch streaks. Getting a bunch of fish in quick time off this edge. Because I can fish it nice and fast. So I'm covering plenty of bottom. Coming across plenty of fish. Oh yeah, he's a better fish. So there you go, that may have been the fish that followed up that last one. So there you go, he's not a giant, but he'd be a legal fish. 3.75 inch streaks, quarter ounce 1.0 TT Demons jig head, and we're just bouncing it back along this edge. So there's a few different retrieves I do when I fish this plastic, and I'll run you through those in a second. We'll just get this guy off and get him sorted. All right, so the retrieve that I was using then when I got those few fish was just a wind as I'm giving it a few rips. And then I'm stopping and letting it hit the bottom again. So wind, 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 rip, rip, rip. I'm ripping as I'm winding. Stop, let it hit the bottom. You can fish this plastic a lot of different ways. You can give it one good lift and then let it drop back down again. You can give it the two hop, the old classic two hop or three hop, or you can do and and then just wind up the slack as it drops, or you can do what I'm doing and lift it as you're winding it and then pause. Just to, I'm fishing it quite aggressively, but I'm fishing it back with a bit of flow. So you can just mix up your retrieve like we always do until we find what the fish want on the day. This thing casts like an absolute little rocket. It's brilliant, so I'll keep punching a few and see how we go. Three in quick time on the 3.75 inch streaks, but before we keep moving along the bank, I'm gonna throw something a bit bigger in there as well, just to see if I can stir up another fish. Those fish have seen that presentation bounce through there a bunch of times. So we'll just see if we change it up a bit and go up to the four inch center jerk shades on that 3 8 ounce, 3 in a TT Demon. So I like a 3 in that four inch, Otherwise, when I get out to deeper structure for snapper and that sort of thing, I'll change it up to a 4.0 in a TT Headlocks HD. So in here, I'm running a 3.0 in this shallower sort of three meter edge and that sort of thing, but get to deeper structure and I'll change that up often to a half ounce 4.0 Headlocks HD. So let's flick this guy around and see if we can pull one more out of here before we move along. There we go. So we threw a couple of casts without a fish on that smaller 3.75 inch streak. So we went for the heavier head and the four inch center jerk shards and we bounced it through there and we picked up another fish. This one feels pretty reasonable as well. There you go. So not necessarily a bigger fish on that four inch bait, but just showing them a different presentation so that we can stir up the bite again. So that guy would be 
probably just legal, so we'll send him back in. But that's on that 3 8 ounce 3 on the 4 inch center jerk shad. So stepping up in size just to rip it through there, and I'll rip it through there again just to see if there's more fish in there, but they, they want to have a look at something a little bit different. That 3 8 ounce jig head on this 4 inch center jerk shad also allows me to fish wider on the edge. So the quarter I'm fishing right up on the edge, the 3 8 I can bring out and fish a bit deeper so I can cover some fresh water as well as covering water that we've already fished that's up in the shallows there. And I think sometimes that heavier head bang in the bottom, stirring up mud and that sort of thing also just changes the presentation a bit more to fire those fish up if they've had enough of the other presentation. So you never know, we might get another eat. All right, so the cast that I'm using, big long punch with the cast. And I'm right up on the edge of that bank there. And I'm just watching the line. So I'm watching the line to see it goes slack when it hits the bottom. Then I'm just giving it three quick rips while I'm winding the reel. And I'm fishing quite quick because the current's pumping back towards me. So to stay in touch with the plastic, I need to fish it fairly quick. Three punches and a wind. So the different retrieves, you can give it that one hop, give it a wind, give it two hops, give it a wind, give it three, or give it a shake and a wind, or you can wind and hop at the same time and then pause it. All of those things will get this bait fish flicking and dancing and moving around like a natural bait fish and stir up those bites. So you can actually flick it around in the water near the boat just to make sure it's tracking straight and just to make sure you're seeing what sort of action it's got and then you can replicate that back out further in the water. Felt that tap, twitching, twitching, got the tap, got the hook up. Wind's picked up, so we might up our weight to um, stay in control with the plastic if we're not having much luck with this guy, but as long as we keep getting bites, we'll keep running a quarter in on this edge. little productive patch we had to find another fish this is a nice fish so it probably took us 10 minutes to find this guy Stay on there, buddy. Right in the net nice to get that guy in the net that's another legal fish so not not a stonker or anything like that but he's sort of getting into the mid 40s that was back on that quarter ounce. You can see he's scoffed that. So a little bit tricky in the wind here, trying to keep control of the plastic. So we give it a few hops, give it a pause, give it a few hops, and you're just waiting for either that tick or for it to load when you twitch that next time you twitch. But that's another nice little legal flatty, eating that 3.75 inch streaks in shiner color, my favorite color in that guy. Might have to get the pliers and we'll get this guy off and back into the water. So that's been a pretty good little session already. We've got three fish that were legal and a couple of smaller ones fishing the centered jerk shads and the 3.75 inch streaks. I've just checked my leader there and that leader's been chewed. Remember when you catch a flatty, always check your leader. Um, these TT pliers are good, get the hooks out and also to change the leader. They've got a nice little cutter feature on there that's a beautiful little cutter. So you can trim that bit of chewed leader out of there and then we'll just retie that with our lock blood knot and we'll get back into them again. 
simple lock blood knot that jig heads fixed on there we're ready to go back along this edge so we're just with the wind sort of pushing from behind and across us i've got in closer to the edge and i'm pretty well just paralleling the edge fishing along the edge basically right in the shallow on the drop off and out a little wider and we're just working that area there within a few meters of the bank and bringing that plastic back with the flow naturally Wind's a bit of a pain, really messing with our retrieves and controlling them with the plastic, but yeah, that fish was right up in the shallows then. So you can see I'm casting along the bank, paralleling the bank, we call it. And that fish has picked it up in shallow on that hopping retrieve. Legal flatty, pan size. All right, there we go. That's another legal pan size flatty. 3.75 inch streaks, quarter in a 2.0 in that TT Demons jig head. Just fishing it on a light spin gear. So that quarter ounce head I'm throwing on a one to three TT Black Mumba, ITX 1000, six pound Platypus Pulse X8 braid, 10 pound Stealth FC leader. So when I step up to the three eighth ounce head, I step up to the two to four kilo rod. So. There you go, another nice little flatty. Fishing those jerk shads, jerk baits, in some crazy wind. Uh, but that's the 3.75 inch getting the bite again. All right, let's get into it. You can probably hear that wind belting now. Apologies for the wind. Scent is extremely important when the wind is blowing like it is because I've got less contact with my plastic, less control. So scent is going to attract fish and trigger strikes. So even if I might not feel the bite as well, hopefully they really, they, they get this scent into them and they get fired up. That jerk bait style profile often has a belly. So this one here, 3.75 inch streaks, I've put some scent in that belly slot and I do the same when I'm fishing the centered jerk shades. So I've got a little bit of scent on the side there that I'll run right down to the tail and I've got that extra squirt of scent in the belly because when these fish eat it, I want them to hang onto it to give me more chance of catching them. drop off is quite steep here so you can see I've almost got the nose of the boat on the bank and I'm drifting parallel along this edge working the plastic right on the edge of the drop most of the flathead will be hanging right where that water drops deeper another great flat here loaded with bait loaded with crabs loaded with all sorts of bits and pieces mud bank shells all sorts of stuff that the fish will feed on so lots of bait coming off this bank the fish just holding on the edge eating it legal fish working the edge all right folks that wind is killer so I've pointed the spot lock of the nose of the boat into the wind swung it around I'm off the back of the boat fishing now hopefully that cuts a bit of the wind for you guys and we can still pick our way along the edge here see if we can find a couple more fish despite that windy condition so as I said this guy great for casting in the wind because it's got minimal resistance so I can punch a cast across wind no worries and then we just got to stay in control of that plastic and see if we can get a bite. So I'm fishing the quarter ounce still with that 3.75. If the wind gets too much of a pain, I can always up to that 3 8 ounce with the four inch center jerk shads and that'll help me cover ground and also control that plastic a bit more with increased weight. So see how we go. Fish was sitting 
right where he should have been then he was sitting all running a little basin up on that edge. Perfect. Despite the wind, you know, we're, we're still getting a couple of fish so basically it's all about positioning the boat to try and get the right cast in the wind. And this guy was sitting right up in a little basin up against the weed so his sonny's are priceless for that sort of thing. I can see, cut the glare, I can see the little basin that he's sitting in. Made the cast and love it when a plan comes together. I love it when that fish is just sitting right where it should be. Love it when you make the cast. I find the fish. That's a nice flatty. You know, we're only in 60 centimeters of water here, and that little pocket over there that I cast into is about a metre deep. And that was where this guy was sitting, as he should be sitting in that hole. Bait in the hole, fish in the hole. All right, there we go, folks. That's another beautiful mid 40s flatty, eating that 3.75 inch streaks paired up with a quarter 2.0 in a demon's jig head. So, definitely an effective plastic for targeting your flatties. You can punch a long cast, you can get it down there quick, you can twitch it around, and this plastic, when it moves in the water, it creates a lot of flash like a, a bait fish that's twitching and, and flicking around down there that these guys want to eat. Straight back into that hole where that one just came from, and we got another one. It's just a matter of working the area and finding those pockets, finding the key structure that's holding these fish, whether it be a weed edge, whether it be a slightly deeper section, rock bar, whatever it is that's holding the fish, that's what we want to find. So we want to find that good structure, find the structure, find the fish. He is almost like a pigeon pair to that last one. Another mid 40s, two and two casts, legal fish on that 3.75 inch streak. So I'm pretty stoked. Windy day, but sure beats staying at home, sitting there, that's for sure. Out here catching a few nice flatties. There you go, he's almost the perfect pair to that last fish, mid 40s, nice fish on that 3.75 inch streaks. Just hopping it in and working it in through the deeper sections here. Sitting in shallow water, but fishing to a little bit deeper area that's got a nice weed edge. So another nice fish, good times, fishing jerk baits. All right, that's about seven legal flatties so far and a handful of small ones. 3.75 inch streaks doing most of the damage. A couple on that four inch center jerk shads on the three eighth ounce head when we were fishing deeper, but that quarter for most of this shallow stuff. I've been fishing the Shiner, which is my favorite color. It's like got a greeny colored back, sort of pearly colored, silvery sort of belly, real natural bait fish color, but the back is also UV. So it's good when you get into murky water and low light, but good mate of mine and Tackle Tactics graphic design guru, Jace, fishes this color, red bone. It's a reddy color glitter in the back of a dark bait fishy back, natural looking belly, and it's actually glow in the belly as well. So that's the red bone. Redbone Glow, great color, especially if you're fishing a bit deep water and that sort of thing, dirty water, weed edges like I am here and that sort of thing. So we're gonna throw Jace's, see if we can find ourselves a nice big flatty to finish off, fingers crossed. Yep, there's a fish straight up. Fish for Jace on the Redbone. Only a little one to start with. We're just warming up on the new colour. So change of colour. Scored ourselves a fish first cast on that red bone 3.75 inch streaks. Pocket rocket to kick things off. That gives me a lot of confidence in this colour that a fish ate it straight up. So get that guy off and back in the drink. Straight back to the bottom where he lives. Belt another cast. 
Another great thing about the 3.75 inch streaks and the 4 inch center jerk shades is they're a very versatile presentation. So I can be hopping it through the shallows for a flathead, see some tail or a trevally or something bust up, belt a cast over there and fish it with a fast and shaky retrieve or a flat out burn and get those pelagic species biting as well. Same as offshore, if the fish are on tiny bait, you can catch mackerel, tuna, all sorts of species. Nice snapper on those small jerkbait plastics. Again, you've got that advantage of a long cast and you've got that ability to get it down quick in current and depth for chasing species like snapper and that sort of thing. So the versatility of this bait, from bass to flatties to snapper to tuna, it catches a stack of different species. Not a big fella by the feel of him, but big long cast with the wind. Hopping that plastic back and we got our bite. Oh, it's not too bad boy. Love and chase the red bone colour. Ah, oh, silver guy. Wasn't expecting that one. Brimbo eating that. In this howling wind, this feels like a decent fish. That's it under him. Looks like Jace might have brought us home. Finish off with that red bone, 3.75 inch streaks. This is a decent fish. So that's a that's a cracker fish to finish the session with. Pretty stoked. Let's have a look at him. All right, folks, there we go. Forget the howling gale. That's a 55 centimeter flathead to finish with. That time we were on the red bone color in that 3.75 inch streaks quarter 20 demons jig head. So that's a cracker way to finish. I could have been at home out of the wind, but I got out here. I think that's about nine or ten legal flatties we've got, plus a handful of smaller ones. We'll get this guy back in the water so you guys can get out here and get stuck into it. If you haven't tried those jerk bait style plastics, awesome, as we said, long casts, get down quick, twitch them around, they look like a bait fish, and these guys love them. Fish on.